بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم Brothers and sisters in Islam, welcome to the show Mind the Science and the Science of the Day of Resurrection We in the past talked about the science that took place and it will never repeat itself again such as the birth and the death of the Messenger of Allah the moon being split the splitting of the moon and we talked about the science that happened in the past will happen in the future and is still happening today tonight insha'Allah we will talk about the signs that we did not witness yet signs that didn't happen yet and we believe in this because this is from what the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam told us from the sifat from the characteristic of a mu'min that he believes the unseen that's why you are known as a believer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran Alif Lameem ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is started with the letters Alif, Lam, Mim only Allah knows the meaning of these letters and then he said ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه this is the book that is the book which there is no doubt in it a challenge for anyone to discover any error in the book and then he said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the purpose of this book is hudan lil muttaqeen guidance for the righteous and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to describe the righteous the first thing that he said was الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ the first quality of the righteous people is that they believe the unseen وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ and they establish the salah and they will pay the zakah and so on but the first يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ you and I may witness or may not witness some of the signs that I would mention be ibn subhanahu wa ta'ala but I am certain as I am certain that I'm sitting in front of you that these signs will come about sooner or later I may see it my children may see it both of us may not even see it but they will come and there's no doubt in that first of these signs is the signs of ru'ya sadiqa the true dreams a mu'min at the end of time will experience a lot of true dreams the messenger of Allah says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam إِذَا اقْتَرَبَ الزَّمَانِ when the time is close and he's talking about the time of Yawm Al-Qiyam لَمْ تَكِنْ he said it is no doubt that the mu'min's dream will become true there is no doubt that the dream of a mu'min will become true and then he said أَسْتَقَكُمْ رُؤْيَا أَسْتَقَكُمْ حَدِيثًا the most truthful dreams comes from the most truthful individuals. Now he mentioned sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that qiyamah will not happen until we have dreams and these dreams will become true. You come, you get up early in the morning and you had your dream last night and you saw something and whatever you saw in your dream it would happen right in front of you. Right in front of you, exactly the way you saw it. And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most truthful dreams, the truth, the dreams that would come as it happened in the dream to reality, comes from individuals who don't lie. They don't lie. They always tell the truth. And then he said something very unique. And the dream of a believer is a branch from the 54 branches of the prophethood from the 54 branches of prophethood this is ajeeb this is very amazing if your dream come true then you have a portion you have a juz from the prophethood that used to come because that dream they come from Allah as we know brothers and sisters 
The things that we see in our dreams are categorized in three different categories. One, things are from Allah. You see something good, khair. You see it for yourself or you see it for someone else. Like the lady who called Sheikh Al-Albani. And she said, I have a question. And she asked her a question. And she said, also, I want to tell you a dream that I had. I want to tell you about a dream that I had. The Sheikh said, Bismillah, go and tell me the dream. Go and tell me about the dream. The lady said, it seemed that we were in a large gathering. And then the messenger of Allah passed by us, me and my sister. And behind the messenger of Allah was you, O Shaykh al-Albani. And you will put your foot on the top of the footprint of the messenger of Allah. So I asked my sister, I said, who is this man? She said, this is Sheikh Al-Albani. Now, Sheikh Al-Albani didn't see that dream for himself. Someone else had the dream for him. But it's a dream of a mu'min. And it was seen for a mu'min. So Sheikh Al-Albani, he cried very hard. And of course, he was about to start the halaqah, the student was sitting. And because he became very emotional, he dismissed the class. Why? Because for him this was a glad tidings. Number one, because anybody who sees Rasulullah in a dream, then he saw him in reality. That was not a shaitan imitating the image of the Messenger of Allah. Number two, him following the footprint of the Messenger of Allah is an indication that he's on the right path. Likewise, do you know how Sheikh Imam Al-Bukhari, how he authored his book, Sahih Al-Bukhari? He had a dream. He had a dream. And in the dream, he was sitting in front of the Messenger of Allah and flying around the head of the Messenger of Allah. So Imam Al-Bukhari in his dream, he was keeping away the flies from the head or from the face of the Messenger of Allah. So he woke up. So I came to the ulama, to the scholars, and said, this is what I saw. Messenger of Allah. And the flies were flying over his head. And I was keeping them away. What is interpretation of the dream? They said, you will protect the sunnah of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You will protect the ahadith of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you will purify them for the nonsense and the weak ahadith, which is like those flies. So the dream, you can see for yourself, you can see for someone. So this is the first category. The second category of dreams is dreams that scares you. Nightmares. You see something terrifying. You see something that is nasty. This is the dreams that comes from shaitan. First category, you tell those whom you love. Second category, if you get up in the middle of the night, you change sides, and you blow to your left, and you say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitani Rajeem. The third category of dreams is things that you see because you desire them. You love money, so you see yourself rich. You love fame, so you see yourself famous. You love someone, you see yourself being with that person. This is atghathu ahlam. And this is not from Allah, from shaitan, it's from yourself. So these are the three categories, and inshallah we'll continue with this. We'll continue with the minus signs of the day of resurrection. After these messages, be idnillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See you soon. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulihi al Kareem. And welcome back, brothers and sisters, to the show Mind the Science and the Science of the Day of Resurrection. We are still talking about the dreams and what the Messenger of Allah said about the dreams, and they would be one of the signs of Yom al Qiyam. First category of dreams 
you tell those whom you love. Second category, if you get up in the middle of the night, you change sides, and you blow to your left, and you say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitani Rajeem. The third category of dreams is things that you see because you desire them. You love money, so you see yourself rich. You love fame, so you see yourself famous. You love someone, you see yourself being with that person. This is at ghathu ahlam. And this is not from Allah, from shaitan, it's from yourself. If you ask yourself, why dreams? Why not something else? It's because, brothers and sisters, at the end of time, Islam would be strange. How is that? People will see Islam under very strange light. The person who is practicing it becomes unusual. The person who has beer becomes fanatic. Sister Muslim sisters trying to maintain their modesty and wear niqab and something that shows that they are modest, they will be called oppressed perhaps. So all this is because an Islam would go back being strange. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Bada al-Islam gharibah. Islam started being strange. When the time of Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab and Umayyah bin Khalaf and all this, when the Messenger of Allah said, O oh, people say La ilaha illallah and you will be successful. They say, what do you mean by La ilaha illallah? This is very strange word. We will never accept that. With time, Islam will go back to the point Islam itself will become strange. That's why the Messenger of Allah said, Bada al Islam gharibah. Wa sayya'udu gharibah. It is start being strange and it will come back being strange again. And then he said, Fatuba lil ghuraba. Tuba for the strangers. And Tuba is a tree in paradise. So the Messenger of Allah said, those people who were considered to be a stranger among their people will receive a place in Jannah. So, Tuba for the strangers. Because the mu'min will become very strange in his own environment, in his own neighborhood, and sometimes in his own household, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will comfort him with true dreams. Because Imagine when everybody's against you, you have no supporter, you may feel weak, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will comfort you with dreams, with true dreams. And that's why the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and one of the signs, one of the minor signs of the day of resurrection is to see true dreams. From the minor signs, brothers and sisters in Islam, sudden death. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, from the signs of the day of Yawm al-Qiyamah, Mawt al-Faj'ah, Rawahu tabaran Sudden death. See, before, people used to get sick, and they would have time to correct their will, to add or take, they will have time to talk to their family members, advise them. They will have time to say the shahada, get ready, meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what the normal death. And that's why, subhanAllah, most of the ulama, when you read their biography, like Imam al-Shafi'i, when you read Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, when you read the biography of these people and how they died, you will see they had time. Time to talk to their friends, advise them, give them nasiha. But from the signs of the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah, is that the person would be fit, healthy, mashaAllah, going to work, and the next thing that you know is he's dead. He's dead. 
No reason, no obvious reason at that moment. I know this is going to happen in the future in more obvious way, but I want to relate to you some of the incidents, the few incidents that we've seen it. If you know one of the ulama, one of the da'is, well known, Salih al Salih, a young man, alhamdulillah, or mid age, he went to the masjid and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he performed day of Jum'ah. He performed Salat al Jum'ah and after Salat al Jum'ah he went back to the hotel and said to his wife, let us get ready, let us get leave. While they were getting ready, the time of Salat al Asr came. He went back to the masjid and Nabi to perform Salat al Asr and he died there. No reason. On the spot. Another video that I've seen, subhanallah, this man in Turkey, MashaAllah, who was Imam of a masjid, bi'idnillah nasallallah and to accept him. We ask Allah to accept him. This man, he walked into the masjid and he went down and he met two little kids and he kissed them and he stood up and he died. Right in front of the camera, he died. Subhanallah. This is one of the incidents, the few incidents that happens. There was no obvious reason that he died. Also, some of the basketball players from the NBA and from others, and you know these people, they work, they play for a living. So they physically fit, they exercise, they eat right, their heart is in the right health. Everything is right with them, but all of a sudden he died on the basketball court. This is called sudden death. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said from the signs of the day of Yawm Al Qiyamah that a sudden death would take place amongst people. From the minor signs is people wishing and desiring death. See SubhanAllah, nowadays everybody tries to live longer. They want to live longer. They exercise, they go to gym, they lift weight, they eat right, they everything because they want to live longer. You see them early in the morning walking, jogging. They walk distance so they can lose some pounds. They avoid all fried food. They only eat that which is healthy. But at the same time, you will find before the day of Yom Al-Qiyam, you will find people who are wishing to die. They are dreaming for death. They are dreaming to meet Malak al Maut. They are asking for death. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا تقوم الساعة حتى يمر الرجل بقبر الرجل فيقول يا ليتني كنت مكا. And said the day of Yom Al-Qiyamah will not come from the hadith of Bukhari until a man will pass by the grave of another man and he will say, I wish I wish I was in your place. La ilaha illallah. Now we're trying to live longer. And that time people will wish to die. Because of the fitting. A man, another narration, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a man will pass by a grave. And he will lie down on the grave of that person. And he will roll over the grave. And he will say, I wish if I was in your place from the fitting of this dunya, from the fitting that he will see in this life that is affecting his deen, he would wish if he was dead. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said radiyallahu anhu, very, very unique statement. He said, there would be a time if one of you can purchase death, you would purchase it. If you can pay for death, you will go and buy it, but you won't be able to find death. Yani subhanallah, situation would be so bad that a person would say, please, is there anyone who's selling death? That's why the Sahabi said, you will wish that death is sold. Now, as I said, people do everything, try to stay alive, but on that time, when that time comes, people would wish to die. And of course, brothers and sisters, for nowadays, even nowadays, you will find people who do want to go that far. People who want to die because of what they're going through. 
Imagine, and it happened in Shishan, it happened in Bosnia, it happened in those countries. Imagine you sitting with your family or you sleeping with your family in the middle of the night. And these people, they walk, they break into your house. And they slaughter your father. And they open the belly of your mother. And they take your wife and rape her in front of you. And they're holding you to watch all this. And they take your children and drown them in a bucket. Or drown them in a pool. And they die one after another while you're looking at them. Now, that person, of course, in that situation, he would wish that he was dead before this incident. This is some of the things that is happening. But again, the signs that we're talking about are the things that most of the people, or a lot of people from Ahl Islam would wish. And this is not the case nowadays. But yet, you will see here and there similar things like that. Now, subhanAllah, we don't see this, we don't live through that, and it will be one of the signs of the day of Yawm al qiyamah Before that day comes, let us ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect it from us. Let us ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from that situation. And let us ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to put us in a place where we are tested, while our faith and iman may not be able to handle it. This is what I have to say for the day. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Until next time.